we actually end up saving and yeah, we end up saving memory. <coughs> um, the way that we do this, usually, I see that a lot of people in the Drupal world actually don't do this method a lot. A lot of people that I've seen configuring responsive images in Drupal and go straight to the picture of it because they have great points defined in their team. But a lot of times we don't need the picture element because part of the actual responsive image HTML specification is source it and size it. And that can be used in a single image stack, which is what is done here. And so here we're, we're going with source it. And the reason why this is a good technique is because the browser actually picks the best source. So it makes an informed decision based on on the sizes you have for what it's actually going to render to the user. And, and browsers are getting smarter and smarter at this. And with sizes, and we have a media condition, which is a subset of media queries. We have the length and the viewport width unit. And the, the way that we actually, sorry guys, the way that we actually have this in Drupal, one important thing to keep in mind when configuring this is that no breakpoints are needed. So if you already have breakpoints defined in your theme and use it for other parts of your site, and you will select from the breakpoint from the breakpoint group responsive image, and you won't select your theme or module with the breakpoint defined. And just you select that viewport, the single one, and you give it the option to select multiple image styles and use the size attachment. Then you can add your size, which also varies to let all your image files that you want in your single image stack. And you of course select the fallback image style, which will be the source. And it's like it's the it's a fallback basically. And so great, so that is the way that we achieve a single image tag responsive images with sources and sizes in Drupal 8. I'm just gonna check out my blog. I don't wanna rush. Great. So now we have the art direction user case. So as you can see, and this is a bit more interesting, and the actual image is cropped in different ways and for different viewpoints. So if you're watching the image on a really great desktop or your laptop, you'll get a nice landscape image. But if you're watching it on your mobile on portrait mode, you'll actually get a portrait based, portrait crop based image. And this is really good. And and it's it's exactly what the picture and tag, the picture specification was made. And so here we actually have several sources that can have a media query. They have a um, source set as well. And you have multiple sources and you have one image tag that's required that can be considered kind of as a fallback. And on this particular technique, you're actually telling the browser what to use. So that's what it's used for, for the art direction user case, because you're, you're specifically telling the browser what file to use in that, in that condition. And you're not allowing the browser to make an important decision, but you don't want to, because that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of the art direction user case. And the way that we get this in Drupal is just setting up in the usual way that we would set up responsive images. 
of course, our breakpoints need to be refined, and we need to select um, our custom theme where the breakpoints are refined. And in this case, instead of selecting multiple image styles, we select a single image style and per viewport, per breakpoint, and that is the way that we do our direction into the link. Cool. So now we're going to talk about lazy loading and next. Lazy loading, and well, I'm just going to go over this, but most of you guys must be familiar with lazy loading. So in lazy loading, we only load the assets that are required for initial view, and we load the rest of the assets when they are visible. And for now, a lot of like, the lazy loading techniques include having placeholders for images so that when we actually scroll and the content doesn't reflow drastically because we can send the initial um, two kilobytes of the image that has the, the sizes that is that gets sent to the browser and that way we can make um, low quality placeholders that have the correct size, the correct dimensions and that way the content doesn't reflow drastically when the images are loaded. And we can achieve lazy loading um, with two main techniques, and two main ways actually. So what's, what's popular right now is native image lazy loading because um, it's just been widely adopted by the by the most popular browsers. So the loading attribute can be set to lazy or eager, but I don't know who would want to set it to eager because loading in setting it to eager means that everything gets loaded straight away. And maybe there's some edge future cases where you might want to do this, but generally you would want to save this to let AC so that it actually doesn't load that image if it's not in the main viewport. And unfortunately, um, IE and Edge, of course, um, don't support and um, native image lazy loading right now. So we can treat this we can treat this as a progressive enhancement since it's not supposed to supported by those browsers, but in time, hopefully, they will come around and we'll start supporting this. Let me get one sip of water, sorry guys. So this is what, um, a couple of examples of native image lazy loading looks like. It's super simple to implement. We just need to add the loading attribute to our images, to our markup. And on some cases, we might want to do the eager, but most cases we'll use the lazy loading attribute. And this, of course, is supported by the picture um, element. And when we use and lazy, naked image lazy loading on art direction responsive images will use the actual attribute on the image, on the fallback image tag. Not on the picture element, of course, and not on the source tag. We'll just take the image tag. This is an example of why actually lazy loading can seriously um, save a lot of resources in the server and we'll see later why that's good, why that has such an impact. But with if we have for example you know, a page that just loads images and it has you know for example a hundred images 
and we could have something like 10 megabytes of images that get loaded straight away when, when we actually visit our website. But just by implementing the attributes, we can reduce that to 250 KBs, just of the initial images that are loaded, and the rest, um, the rest are lazy loaded, so they only when they come to the viewport. And the amount of resources we can save for lazy loading is, in cases like this, can be seriously, seriously drastic. Another way that uh, lazy loaded gets implemented is using something like lazy sizes, which is a lightweight lazy loader uh, written in vanilla JS. It focuses on high performance. I use this quite a lot and I've gotten really, really good results with it. You just need to add the, the lazy load class to your images. And it works really well, and it actually uses um, native um, lazy loading if that's supported by the browser. If not, it uses a polyfill. Um, but this enables us to, to add um, lazy loading to, to, to our websites and not worry about certain browsers not supporting it. You just use this. Um, Everything that's done for us, the, the volume still gets implemented for us. And it's great because it's written in vanilla JS, and we all know that jQuery is on the way out, so we should really start using plugins that are within vanilla JS. And, and I used to use Blazy a lot, but now I'm We've moved on from lazy to lazy sizes. And the lazy module has done the same. So one good way to implement this is within the lazy module. You'll have lazy loading as a formatter. And it works really well. And you'll be able to, serve, to save your clients web or your website a lot of resources by implementing this. Now we're going to talk about optimized images. So for everyone that a Drupal guy and this image must be really familiar. So this is a standard image that gets used the placeholder image and when you're creating your image styles. So one of the ways that one of the most common ways that we optimize our images in Drupal is to the image toolkit and we have by default we have gd2 the php library and the gd toolkit is active on most systems and can be used without any additional settings and that's why it ships with drupal and you don't have to basically do anything and it's you know, virtually ubiquitous it's everywhere it can just be turned on and it'll work. And it works really well. It has web P support. And it's, it's a really good stable library, but it doesn't give us the best compression out there with better toolkits. And one of those toolkits that I'm talking about is Image Magic. Image Magic provides a fast, simple way to automate image resizing. And from the tests that I've done with the installing Image Magic on a VPS and the Drupal module with it, and I saw a, need, a decrease of from 20 to 40 percent in image sizes over the standard GD2 toolkit with similar settings and so that's a lot and 
I highly recommend the image magic to anyone that can use it. Unfortunately, and some hosting providers don't, don't provide that, and some hosting providers don't allow you to install binaries in your servers. And so hopefully, and they will provide image magic already for you. And if not, it's definitely that you should talk to your hosting provider about. Question. And there's many, many tools that I tested for compression and for PNGs and for JTEX. And I have my recommendation on the best tools available. APEG Optin and is a utility to optimize JPEG files. I got really, really good results with JPEG Optin out of the, all the JPEG-based modalities for compression, and this is my pick. It's the one that gave me consistently better results than everything else. The average percentage that I saved was of 71%, which is really, really good. And I highly recommend JPEG Optin. I know that the same case as image magic that this is not provided by all hosting providers. And some hosting providers and have some alternatives to JPEG Optin, but and JPEG Optin produces really good results. So I would I would talk about to my hosting provider about that. And one tool that gave me even better results is PNG Quant. PNG Quant is a utility and library for lossy compression of PNG images. Actually, JPEG Optin is lossless and lossy, but of course, if we want a decent compression, we we'll have to go with the lossy settings, and because of the lossless, we'll get really big file sizes. And for example, and actually with the GD2 toolkit, and G, if sometimes if your images are are already like compressed a bit by using like something like Photoshop, like the same format thing, and sometimes if they're large images, the images that are created by the GD toolkit can be bigger in file size. So so you know, be careful with that because sometimes you want to optimize an image and you add a mixed style, but it actually makes the image bigger. So be careful with that, you know, and investigate and set benchmarks and test your images and see how well your compression is doing. And I would really advise to consider changing your toolkit if you need to, especially on high performance websites. And PNG Quant gave me great results on all of my tests. It consistently and gave me an average percentage of over 80% on, on the tests that I performed on the benchmark. And I thought it was really good. And I really recommend PNG Quant as, as a, a tool for PNG loss compression. One that I thought, another tool that I thought I might talk about was TinyPNG. TinyPNG is really different because it's actually an external image processing service. And it's actually paid for, and it's pretty good. And they have a free account. They have um, 500 compressions. They let people for free per month. So they have an API. They give you an API key. And all of these compressions um, have been enabled and have been tested and have been um, used in Drupal through the image optimized module, which is a great module that gives you different pipelines to, the, to optimize your images. And you can set your pipelines, you can set it site-wide, 
or you can set it curve image style. And that single model is the one that, well, of course, it's found the binaries. It's what gave me the best results and what really helped me get a better score, for example, things like Lighthouse and page speed tests. So I really recommend, if you're serious about optimizing images, using the image optimized model and setting up some pipelines for your different compressions. Uh, Tiny PNG was good, not as good as PNG Quant, but on average, um, I saved 73% with Tiny PNG. And I haven't used the premium service, so this is just a free service. Um, it was pretty standard setup, it was pretty easy setup. And um, one thing about optimizing the disk is a file type. So we already know about JPEGs, PNGs, progressive JPEGs. And, but one file type that has been getting a lot of attention lately is the WebP format. And I'm a big fan of WebP. Right now, I kind of was on the fence, but I really like it now and it's capable of reducing the image size by 20 to 50 percent and the web the web profile type can actually be used with image to image magic image magic and gives you a new convert image style action and where you can convert to web to web P format you can convert, you can add a step on the image style to convert them to the format, and it works really well. And if you're not using image magic and you use GD2, there's the Drupal module that enables what you for you if your server supports it works. And the actual GD2 module works really well with WebP, and the module worked really well. They gave me the results. And, but actually using WebP in con through image magic gave me a lot better results of in compression than using the GD tool did. There was a there was a, a big difference. Cool, so now we've talked about um, or images, why it's important to, to have responsive images, to have lazy loaded images, and optimized images. We, we saw the different ways that we can achieve this, the different techniques, the different tools, and the different ways to achieve this in Drupal. Um, we also saw why this is important, because our users really care about this. And one thing that we're going to see now is the environmental impact of our images, which is really important. Because 17% um, of the total carbon footprint caused by technology is due to data centers. And the electricity that is needed to run these data centers is near 30 billion watts. And these servers wait waste 90% of the energy they use because they run on full capacity all day long. So that's why we need you know, better, better, better tools to optimize our content. And that's why having things like lazy loading is so important because we don't want um, our data centers to be loading things that are never going to be used, are never going to be seen. So that's why lazy loading is so important. We actually save energy in data centers. And that is good. That is good for the overall environmental impact of our website. There's actually uh, several tools that you can use to test the environmental impact. Generally, if you get a good performance score in Lighthouse, I would say that that's a good indicator that 
that your carbon footprint is not terrible, that carbon footprint of your website is not terrible, but do get it tested <coughs> what what you've told to get and and see also that optimizing it using responsive images, optimizing your images will give you great results and will drastically reduce the environmental impact of your website or your app. And data centers will soon have a bigger carbon footprint in the entire aviation industry. So it's a big it's a big problem, you know, and it's for a problem. So we need to find ways to, to make this better. The internet actually uses ten percent of the world's electricity. So sometimes you don't really think about it. You don't think that websites really have some environmental impact. But they do have a big environmental impact, and we need to find ways to make it better. And the average page weight has increased by 34 to 35 percent in the last three years, and 70 percent of that is due to heavy images. So this is actually very worrying. We need to be doing better, but but there's some things I can do, especially and the uh, things um, are related to your host, to your hosting provider. So I'm actually using this tool on your website and your application. So these are my recommendations for your hosting provider. So if you see anything here that that your 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 hosting provider doesn't support, you might actually want to talk to them about it. And the more that we pressure the hosting providers to actually include these tools, the better that it will be for the overall environmental impact of the internet. So, and support the image magic toolkit, and not all hosting providers do that, but, and some do, like for example, I know Apia, which is really cool, and you just need to find the, you use it in Drupal with the image magic module, you just need to add the path to XDX and Drupal, and you can find that information on Apia's documentation. And, and if you install it in your server, well, um, with binaries, you just do version which, and it will let you know what's up happening. And another recommendation is to, to support JPEG opt-in and PNG font. This is actually a bit different because I know that the major and um, Drupal hosting providers don't support these, and so. It might be good for all of us to start pressuring them into supporting tools like this, because from my benchmarks, I mean, some hosting providers support alternative tools but have a much, much lower um, compression rate. So if we want to get serious about really optimizing images, we need to let our hosting providers know that we want tools like JPEG Optin and PNG Font that they have really good support, really good results. And we also need to let them know that we want to use WebP as a file type because it, it reduces disks and the size of the images greatly. Um, actually, most hosting providers are good in this space, but if your hosting provider doesn't support WebP, you really want to talk to them about it. And the single biggest thing that we can all do, and the single biggest thing that any website can do is to switch to a renewable energy data center. This is easier said than done, of course. And for example, Amazon, and Amazon actually, I think it was two years ago that they stated that they were 50 per, that they use 50% renewable energy and that they were committed to using 100% renewable energy on the data center. But that hasn't happened yet. And we are waiting for that to happen. And we need to pressure their partners 
and to actually make that happen. So a lot of times you might not know this, but your hosting provider actually uses something like Amazon because you might be and their partner. So they use their server and those servers don't use 100% renewable energy. Uh, we need to pressure all those uh, or hosting providers to put pressure on Amazon to start using 100% renewable energy because that's the single biggest thing that we can do and to mitigate environmental impact of our website, switching to renewable energy. So this is just a list um, that you guys might want to run by your hosting providers. And if we all pressure our hosting providers, mm -hmm. we might actually make this happen. And let me check out my talk. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes for questions. So, and I'm yet, I'm just sitting you very much for listening to my presentation. And if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to to listen to them and answer them. All right, thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Yes? Uh, have you ever used uh, Kraken IO? Did you hear that? Have you ever oh. used Kraken IO? Excuse me, um, I really, I'm having a really hard time listening. And can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Have you ever used Kraken IO? Yes, I have used Kraken IO, and it does have really good results. And I think, and yeah, I think it's one of the tools that you definitely need to have in your toolkit. And, and yeah, I mean, I I'll, I'll have to I I'll post. I'm working on a blog post that's related to this, so I'll post all my benchmarks, and I did get a benchmark on Kraken, and, and I'll show you guys what was what, what the results, but they were generally pretty good, but not as high as other, as other external services. Anything else? No? Can okay. he share his presentation? This is all going straight up onto YouTube. It'll probably be on okay. later today. Oh, and the link will be on the main Drupal campsite. It will be, yes. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. I will, I will post my my slides and I will add some links. So great. So yeah, this will be online and and yeah, and I'll I'll make sure I post the links somewhere that you can all I'll check them out. And as soon as my blog post is ready, and um, I'll share with you guys in the Drupal UK Slack channel so you guys can check out all the benchmarks we did. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much.